I put my two feet down and it was one of those things <coughs> where we took like the different courses about how you know that you're in labor and one of them was if your water breaks but they said it's not going to be like in the movies where you you know all of a sudden it all gushes out well that's actually exactly what happened like I put my feet down and it was wet everywhere and I was like oh my god and Rob sat up and he was like is it happening it was happening so then I went to sit on the toilet because you know you have water coming out and then the second thing that we were told was you know, the you mucus plug, a.k.a. the bloody show, so we're told that, you know, when the day's coming up, that maybe, like, you would start seeing a pinkish discharge. I never did. I sat down on the toilet right after my water broke, and my entire mucus plug came out. Like, it was... I'll cut to the pictures. We have it on pictures, like, gooey, this much. It wouldn't come off her hand. I don't think anybody wants to cut to the photos, but... So then, in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, so that's two of the three things that we had talked about and then the contraction started so there was like no doubt are you in labor and in a weird way like is you know frantic with the water breaking kind of made things at least it was a clear indication that we knew right away we needed to go to the hospital yeah i texted her doctor called her doctor she said go to the hospital sounds like she's in labor and i texted family members on a massive text chain which came in handy later as we were doing, or I was doing play-by-play -play of the entire labor process all the way through birth. Well, we'll have to, so we left, and I think like my biggest nightmare, I mean, obviously you you can't plan your labor, but in my mind I was like, God, I just hope it's not at like two or three o'clock in the morning because you're all groggy and you, you know, you, you'd rather have somewhat of a sleep and maybe look kind of presentable because you're about to go give birth, but um, it was fine. Like, I got in the shower because I knew I wanted to take a shower. We'd already had our bags packed. We'll get to that later. So I put on just something comfortable, and then I was really glad that I'd already gotten, you know, for postpartum, kind of like these adult diapers, because once your water breaks, like, you just are going to keep leaking. So, like, the whole car ride, we're, like, driving every bump we go through. I'm just like, oh, my God, there's just stuff leaking out of me. And it sounds graphic, but it was, like... When I got there and I took that diaper off, I was like, oh my God, I feel like I know what it's like to be a baby. So talk about when we checked in at Cedars, we got there at five o'clock. No traffic, 20 minutes maybe, 22 minutes. Best parking spot in the entire hospital. Uh, no traffic, it was a Sunday night, Monday morning, and uh, basically three hours at the, after the end of his due date. So he was basically right on time. And we got to the hospital, carried about eight bags, up to uh, the check-in and filled out some paperwork. Yes, eight bags. So I just want to say that um, obviously first time parents, you know, you plan ahead and I had packed one bag for myself. I packed a bag for Asher and then I told Rob to pack a bag and then to bring a bag with like pillows and some snacks. He drops me off. I'm waiting for him. He rolls up with like eight different bags and everybody's yeah. like laughing at him they're like you must be a first the time the other dad. three bags had breast pump which all, i told you not to bring you said to bring i said leave it in the car you're supposed to bring another bag for things that you take home which we did we took home a ton of stuff and we had a bag of pillows and blankets and other stuff so we had everything we needed but the check-in at Cedars, they were laughing. We had so much stuff that they had to basically bring Rob like a luggage cart. Like we were checking into the Four Seasons. It was amazing. So then we go to the first room and basically because my water broke, you know, they can't check your cervix because there's a risk of infection. But because the water did break, you know that things have to move along at a quicker pace because the baby needs to come out. So we basically waited for my doctor to get there and then um, when she got there, she, well, how many centimeters dilated was I when she got there? Two three, three, three. Three. So then what happened was, is they put me on, and I always forget the name of it. What's the drug? So it says with a D. It pushes the contractions. Oh, that's uh, Pitocin. Pitocin. So then, you know, these contractions started to kick in. And once you get on the Pitocin, the contractions get closer together and they were more intense. So I was like, Hanging out on my birthing ball. Hey, baby. Hey, sweet. Oh, oh. And parenthood. Yeah. And parenthood. That's a nice little burp. There we go. Okay, to daddy. Daddy's going to burp him. And you guys will just get to enjoy the whole thing.
So we're gonna burp him. So Asher's a very good eater. He's six days old today, so this is exactly um, one week ago is his due date. So basically, um, the contraction started to get really close. So at that point, I knew everyone had said, if you're gonna do an epidural, don't wait too long because you can miss your window. So I was kind of on the birthing ball. I was trying to do stuff and I was like, oh no, like this baby's coming. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> oh my gosh. Right. hey, we're new parents. It's day six. We're, we're doing our best. So then I called for the epidural because I knew that, you know, when you call for the anesthesiologist, it takes 20 minutes. It takes some time to get there. Then you have to get the epidural and then it takes another 20 to 30 minutes for it to kick in. Once you get the epidural, then things are going and, um, you can, you're fine, but just starting is it takes longer. So with me, um, I had a really compacted spine because Asher was really big and I also have some back problems from a car accident. So it took eight different tries to get the epidural. So when you're getting an epidural, you have to stay completely still. So even though I was having these massive contractions that were like killing me, I couldn't move because you can't mess up the epidural. So that was definitely a really challenging part. And I remember you were kind of saying that you were watching and you knew that that was, that was not great. Um, so at that point in my mind, like I had been doing hypnobirthing meditation for about the last 10 weeks of my pregnancy. I wasn't planning on doing a hypnobirth. I just knew that I wanted tools to use to help me get through the process and the pain because I just didn't see that screaming and crying and grabbing and throwing things was gonna be effective. I knew that the only people that were gonna be there were me and my husband, all of our families on the East Coast. I was hoping my mom was gonna be there, but my dad isn't well, so it was just me and Rob, and so I just knew that I needed to stay really grounded. So I started just trying to take those deep breaths just in and out the mouth, and pretty much that is what I did the entire pregnancy. Um, the entire delivery after I got the epidural my doctor came back and she got she had gone back to the office and then she came to check in on me she's like well how are your contractions feeling are they feeling strong and I was like you know they feel I don't know maybe we should check in an hour and then I got a really big one and they checked and what time was this sweetie two it was like 1 30 at 1 30 I was tense 10 centimeters dilated so it Quickly. was go time so it was a really quick progression from when from two or three um, centimeters to 10 centimeters yeah from, fully from when we kicked in that medicine fully that really, effaced yeah fully effaced the nurse was in there almost the entire time two yeah. shifts changed to let them go to lunch but and i delivered at cedar sinai everyone was so amazing so professional so helpful. but it was weird like everyone said you're first and look i ended up you know 12 plus hours of labor if you look at like when the water broke to the baby um, was born, but it was still like when they were like, you're 10 centimeters dilated, like I was like, oh, cr it's happening. It's like you're already having contractions and it's happening. But when you're told that you're 10 centimeters, like it's happening. We're like, really? Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. We and then I was thinking, I was like, thank God, I, you know, we didn't wait another hour. So um, then it's like you get ready to push and... I've been doing these exercises that were supposed to teach you how to use those muscles correctly so that you're pushing well. I mean, how do you know if you're pushing well? I don't know if you have an epidural, you're doing, you're doing your best. But so you have like, there was a nurse on the right leg and a nurse and Rob on the left leg and you have your knees up and like, they're looking at the contractions that are coming and they're, you know, basically they time it. So you take a deep breath. And then you hold it and you count to 10 and you just push with all of your might and you do that three times in a row. And I noticed that when there would be like a really, really big contraction, like Asher would give me like a warning, he would kick me. And then before I was like, oh my God, he kicked me. And then my doctor would say, are you ready? And then I knew a contraction was coming and it was like the biggest ones. And he did it like 12 times. So I just felt like Maybe the hypnobirthing worked and we just seemed to be really in sync as far as working together and trying to get him down. Um, and you were just texting everyone. Like Rob was like holding my leg, but like it needed to be up like here. He's holding it like this. He's filming everything like this. He's like we'll texting everybody. And I'm like, babe, I need you. Like you have to focus. Like you're my person. The contractions you have to focus. Would come first every four minutes and then three minutes, then two minutes. And then one but minute. once she was in labor, it was like every 
one to two minutes. So in between contractions and pushes, I went to my cell phone and I was texting all of the family members. Dad, Joan, Jeff, Jess, her mom, they don't know who these my older are, brother, yeah. my older sister, their partners, wives. Like everyone. And I'm and like, I like, need you. I'm like, it. I need water. I need ice. And then I would run so over and get her a little ice, ice chips and water and I was feeding her while we were um, getting uh, in between the contractions. But it was, it was a smooth oil, oil machine. Yeah. Well, maybe. And I wanted to say, um, so I did sit on the birthing ball at the beginning and then I used the peanut ball um, while at the early stages of labor to help kind of stretch the hips out. So I know a lot of people have asked about that. I started with a walking epidural and then I went with a full epidural because that pain when those contractions were a minute apart and were so intense was like un freaking believable. Like more than I even thought it was going to be. Do we want to get him in a little swaddle? I don't want to be swaddling All now. right. We might have to do a, a pause in a minute, but because we never want to have an upset baby. Okay, we think we need a swaddle. We'll be right back. Pause. Yeah, we're learning that um, usually when babies get upset, it's three things Four. for hungry, swaddle, poopy, pee diaper, and sometimes with Asher, burping. it's just some good old fashioned burping. Which he just did. So I think where we left off was just talking about how, so, you know, I'm pushing, Rob's like filming, and I told him, I was like, whatever you do, you cannot film like dead on, like straight vagina. I was like, if you're gonna do any photos or video, like I want you over my shoulder, because I, I don't know, I just feel, I don't even wanna look at those photos, like let alone, so I think other people, I know some people think birthing photo photography is beautiful, and, and I get it, but I just didn't want those kind of photos, because I know he gets really excited, and the last thing I want is a photo of a head coming out of my vagina being texted around to family members, but that's just me. And I didn't. Well, I got some really good video. <laughs> he did get some good With some video. vagine. He did get some good video, which I still haven't seen. I got POV from her above her head. Yeah. Zooming in on what was coming out that way. It's going to be amazing. Yeah. I mean, maybe we'll This see. little head, you saw the hairs start coming out, and it just sat there. It was about an hour, hour and a half. Yeah. That he was just sitting in the birth canal, which is why we ended up doing. Well, it was really rough. The last 30 minutes were really rough on me because I just was delirious. Like at this point, I had been mm -hmm. pushing actively for two and a half hours and he had just been stuck in the same place. My OB was incredible. She was, you know, putting oil, trying to stretch. But at that point, like I could not stretch anymore. I wasn't tearing naturally. Like my body was just, it was done. And... I had, I had been pushing so hard, like I couldn't even say words. I couldn't, all I could do was say ice because my throat was so dry and you're just so out of it because you, you know, you ha I had the epidural, I could feel the sensation. I wanted to make sure that I could feel the push so that you know that you're actively engaging. I was actively engaging my core muscles, pushing the way that I trained them. I was doing my meditations. I was doing like everything, but you know, there's all, there there was nothing else. She was that a trooper. I, I have so much respect for her. She didn't cry, scream once. I was expecting curse words. Yeah. Tons of stuff. She was just in the moment, push when she was supposed to push, quiet, reserving energy when she was supposed to do that. Come on, Rebecca. Come on in. And this is our wonderful night nurse. So, um, you know, at that point, like you, I just felt completely out of it. I also there was also a problem where my blood pressure was getting really high. And then I started to sense that something was wrong. And that's when you just sort of are going, okay, there all of a sudden more people started like flying in the room. Like for a long time, it had just been Rob, my OB, it had been the nurse. And then all of a sudden I just see like it all these people. It went from three people plus Stuart to about seven or eight people plus yeah. Stuart. So I just hope that this was gonna, you know, flow and we were gonna work together. And Asher was warning me every big contraction and I was doing all my visualizations, you know, like the things I've been doing is like your vagina opens like a flower and you are one with your baby and you give your baby the room that they need to come out. So I'm like trying to say all this stuff. I'm like, this baby's head. not coming out. I didn't hear her saying anything. <laughs> but just in my head. So they would put oxygen on me to breathe and then they just kept taking my blood pressure. It was getting higher and higher. And then... Um, and his was getting lower. Yeah. So then what happened was his blood pressure was getting lower. And then you can say more. Well, you I could see that his head was right there in the birth canal. And it was there for a long time. And it kept texting, 
He's right there. Any push could do it. Any push could do it. But and that went on Everyone forever. kept thinking something's wrong. Yeah. I didn't know how long it was supposed to take. And finally, the doctor was getting frustrated, and she tried her best to do a natural birth with, yeah. without any other contraptions. But then she said, we're going to have to cut you just a little bit to get his room for his head. And then she yeah. snipped a little bit, and then there was a little more room, and he came out a little more. Yeah. But in order to get him through, they got this contraption where they attach a little suction cup to his head and wind it on top and then slowly tighten it and then pull, 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 and then and he popped out. I could kind of see, like I saw them put something in and I saw like some winding and I was just like out of my mind because you're just, you have absolutely no control and you just know something's wrong and when you hear something's wrong with the baby, then you don't even know what to do. And I remember she's like, can, can I cut you? And I was like, wait, what? Cause I was like, just trying to process, okay, this is all happening. I was like, yes, you know, and um, so he had to be vacuumed out, which can be very traumatic. Suction, for, it's not for more, the, yeah. Let's call it, but it's not like, very it's traumatic for the handheld. baby. And then, you know, that's when they come out and they have this thing on their head. And so he was all red. And so finally, you know, he came out and then they popped him on my chest and like, there's like, Rob snapped one photo, I'm like reaching for him. You know, at one point when he was stuck for so long, she even asked like, do you want to touch the head? And I was just like, no, I, I want to hold my whole baby. I don't want to touch the head. I, I want to hold my whole baby. So I put him on my chest and I just started like crying, like uncontrollably. And then, you know, he was there for maybe like two, three seconds, but he was blue. So they, you know, took him off and then all of a sudden all I see is all these people crowd around and I just see them all around and what was it the baby born well, it was so tight that the umbilical cord was wrapped around his neck yeah. so he was not getting enough air uh, so they brought him over to this other bassinet area and with a heat lamp on it and it warms him up and they clear his nostrils like and check his senses up. there's something called the APGAR test A-E-G-A-R yeah. yeah. and it measures his alertness and his color and Respiratory, I don't even know what it all stands for, but he had a seven and then they do it again and it was a nine. Seven is still uh, okay, but seven is low. So seven and nine out of ten. And But he was very alert. We have pictures. Yeah. His eyes were open. He was looking. He cried like that. Yeah, and which you want them to get a good, it. healthy cry. He was very cry. with it and very loving. And just, so I started crying too. I was crying. Yeah. I was so happy. He was out. He was um, healthy. And he was then safe. They, and after was so all this stuff, like me, I'm sitting there and I can't really see him. And you have to wait because, you know, the placenta comes next. So they had to deliver the placenta. So I'm just like totally helpless. And I didn't know what to do. Maybe he needs to burp it. Like we're, again. right now, we're like, what do figure we do? It out. But figure we it figure out. it out. We figure yeah, it yeah. out. So, um, I was just like a mess because I knew something wasn't right and I didn't feel good because I was having complications and I'd been through a really traumatic, stressful situation. And then all of a sudden, like my whole body was just shivering like uncontrollably because after you have the baby, like there's a drop in, like your hormones change all of a sudden, like I was freezing and they were trying to put like heat blankets on me and I didn't know what was going on with him. And so that was just like so frightening. And you're just like waiting. So I had to wait for the placenta to be delivered. And then I had to wait to get, you know, then you have to get stitched up. So you're just like sitting there and you just, there's like so many people in the room, but I just felt so alone. Cause it's like, I don't know. I just wanted my baby. And I felt terrible for Stuart cause she was, was in awful. pain, but obviously the baby was okay at that point. And I would just wanted to be able to support her. Yeah. So then finally they bring him over and I just remember like, they put him on my chest and they had like this little hat on him and he just smelled like so good. <laughs> I was just like, oh my God. And I, at first I said to Rob, I was like, I don't know what to do. I'm scared to hold him because I feel like I'm shaking so much that I, I can't, I'm going to drop him. And he was like, you're fine. You're okay. And then he was like a little heat warmer. So then when he went on my chest, it actually like soothed and calmed me. And a big thing here is skin to skin after he's born. So they had her skin here yeah. his skin and he just passed out we took a picture and we have yeah. a video and he was a trooper from the very beginning no tears no over no overacting to any or overreacting to anything no. that happened around him he's been such an amazing baby like just i think that once i was able to like hold him and then i think what was really scary um and like as i said the nurses and everyone were so great and 
I was just really focused, but then my blood pressure kept going up. So then they took him to the nursery and I had to stay another two and a half hours where they were worried that maybe I had a hematoma or like something else was wrong. I was in so much pain that I was just like, and I never cried, but I was just like bawling. Like I could, I was crying uncontrollably and I just kept on like apologizing because I was like, I don't know what's wrong. They're like, you're fine, you're fine. But they told me, they were like, you know, we think instead of going to the regular recovery, you need to go to the intensive unit where we're gonna check on you every hour. And I was just like, no, 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 I don't wanna do that. I just wanna go be with my baby. So it was, that was really hard. And I feel like you don't really hear that kind of stuff. I think a lot of women sometimes kind of sugarcoat their labor stories, or maybe if there was something that happened, they try to just blow past it like, yeah, this happened. But it was, it was a lot. It was physically, emotionally, draining and then you know i had been very honest that i was worried i was like i don't know if i'm even going to be maternal you know <laughs> like i don't know if that's me but when that baby comes out and they hand it to you like you become like a mama bear it's like a different person unleashes and you're just you want to be with your baby you want to protect your baby so eventually um they had sent another doctor and they went back in my vagina to search for a hematoma they went back in my butt which let me tell you was like freaking awful like so much pain, but then I slowly, my blood pressure went down. And then I found out that I would be able to go to a regular room. And she hadn't eaten in 24 hours. I hadn't eaten in 24 hours because here's the thing, like, especially if you're gonna do, well, I think it's everyone. I don't, was it just because I was gonna it's do everybody. an epidural? So you can only have clear liquid, so that's like water, you know, g coconut water. Um, I could have broth and like sorbet. But I was starving because I hadn't eaten since 8 p.m. the night before. So you're so tired, you're so drained, you've been pushing, and then you're like starving. Did he burp a little bit more? A little more, a little more, look at that face. Look at that pun. Oh my God, look at that pun. Look at that pun. How do you not love this kid? <laughs> Cutest thing. He's the most precious. So he's just like our whole, our whole world now. So it was, um, an intimate delivery, like a, a lot of people want doulas and they want a lot of people in the room and we had talked about a lot of things because of things out of our control, the only people that were going to be there were me and him, but I'm actually glad, like, also no, you know, there was like an intern that came through and they wanted to be in the room. I didn't, if someone wasn't doing something, I didn't want them in the room. I didn't want someone taking notes, like I wanted people that were working and doing stuff because I just wanted it to be a more intimate affair. And that was just, and it was that was just our nice, choice. Really. It felt like a spa. Yeah. I had spa music playing the entire time. So I was trying to keep that meditation vibe going. And um, We lowered the blinds so there was yeah. light coming in. Kind of feels like, feel like the sun's been going down yeah. as we've been doing this. We ended up with a beautiful room. So we had great daylight, which was wonderful. Um, it made a big difference. And... I'm trying to look at some prompt questions. What was the first thing you said to your baby when your baby was born? I said, hi, baby. Hi, Asher. And I just cried. I was like, oh, yeah. I did it. I love you. Here you are. And we have pictures of that, too. The first time I had eye contact with him, and he goes. And I'm just sitting there wanting to he die. He recognized my voice. He recognized yeah. her voice. But, yeah, that moment, like, especially if you have, I mean, even if it's smooth sailing, that moment when you first hold them, it's like nothing I've ever experienced in my life. Because you're nine just, months, you're. And even while you're planning on getting pregnant, you're wondering what's going to happen. What's it going to look like? Is he going to be healthy? Is he going to be okay? And then the second he comes out, you're like, here he is. It's yeah. so, so refreshing and relaxing and rewarding. And then we've had an incredible week, to be honest. That'll be another time. But this is who he is. He's a yeah. cute little beautiful munchkin who's alert yes. and aware and like it's smart. it's so dark right now. No. And he's, and he's just a really special little kid. And everyone's kid is special in their own way. But to us, he's the most special. So we couldn't be more in love. Um, the postpartum stuff will be another adventure. I will just end it with saying, your first pee and your first poop. Good luck, ladies. <laughs> that's, that's the, the postpartum has been, you know, there's so much that everyone just talks about the birth, the birth, and then the postpartum is like a whole nother thing. But that first night with your baby is like nothing else. And don't be afraid to take advantage of the nurses. They're so great. They'll come in, they'll help, they'll teach you things, but you know, really use them as a resource. Um, 
And I think I think that's a lot of detail for you guys. I think that's a lot of detail for you guys. So is there anything that we're missing with the birth story of Asher? No. For dinner, I went around the corner and got chicken parmesan and pizza. Oh my god, I've delicious. Been, it was the best. I my stomach had shrunk and so small I could only have one piece. It was the best piece of pizza I've best. ever had. Best. And in my we went life. around and we ate in the room that we got shuffled into. It was tiny. I slept on a little cot. We'll get into all that. That's all postpartum stuff. But for me, the birth was better over and than anything I could have ever imagined. She was incredible. Getting there was fine. Getting checked into the room. We had one two, one room to beforehand, one room to give birth. It was a beautiful suite, which we weren't guaranteed to get. It had a beautiful view of the Hollywood Hills. The sun came up as we were in there. Um, the nurses and the doctors were incredibly professional. Um, we had time and to really- nothing like the smell of your baby. It's just had, an intoxicating yeah, drug. We had um, time to prepare. Uh, everyone was so helpful and calming and and then the process was amazing all the way until the end where his little tiny head yeah. couldn't get out and that was it but up to that point smooth sailing and for me it was keeping her happy holding her leg with my, this arm feeding her ice it's with that arm. I think that um, the humorous moment would definitely be like Rob holding my leg but dropping it and me going I need you to focus and then also I was texting this uh, my friends from Miami my friends back east my family back east my friends Which in I LA said, I need you to be with me and he's so just I had important. multiple text change going help. sec even text his family members said to him I can't believe how much you were texting <laughs> but now we'll have all that too as far as our play-by-play -play. so yeah, was it was great -play. and I felt like we got to share with everybody and, and he did take video of the end and I haven't been able to watch it yet because I just don't I mean, emotionally I'm not there where I want to see that, but hopefully I'll be able to. Yeah, we have great video. It makes me tear up just thinking that anything, you him. know, you grow this person for nine months and thinking that something could happen with this. It's awful. So I'm so glad that he's healthy. And happy. Mm -hmm. He's the happiest. And he's the sweetest. And she's the best mom. So that's our first story. We love you, Asher.